Thanks for joining us tonight. Look at this star-studded cast of characters that we have. That this is a major recovery day at Boston College. Uh, the marathon is quite a grueling event, even if you didn't run, especially if you didn't run. So the fact that you guys are all still um, you know, full of energy and smiles the night uh, after the marathon, it's very impressive. So wait another few seconds for people to join us and we'll get started. Um, and I know that I'm not in formal like dress for an admissions counselor. Um, I am sort of repping my like BC marathon shirt since the marathon was yesterday. And our session is about, uh, I named it no Greek life, no Greek life, no problem, which is sort of a, an idea that came about over the last couple of years about, you know, even some of the people that are here on joining this call live in states and areas where public schools, big, large land grant universities and Greek life sort of dominate the social scene of colleges. And BC doesn't have Greek life. So how do people make friends? How do people develop a social network? How do they buy in and engage in the community? Because I know, we're talking about this before, I know for a fact that the people tuning in that were accepted to Boston College were very engaged in their community, both not just academically, that's a given, engaged in leadership, engaged in service, engaged in the, the arts, engaged in you know civic affairs, like so many athletics, so many things that you've done that really made the whole community embrace you and gave you pride and school spirit. And certainly we want that at our school too. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. Uh, so I'm your host, my name is Chris O'Brien. I'm Associate Director of Admissions. And I'm joined by a cast of characters that will introduce themselves shortly. You know, I have some questions that I'm going to feed these guys about how they've developed a social network, what some of the big traditions and events are at our campus. I've already referenced the marathon, which was yesterday. It's not just a BC event, but Boston and BC share this event in terms of getting everybody out and raising money and celebrating Boston. It was one Boston day yesterday, so a great event for everybody. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about how people get it get their social networks developed and how they make friends. That's a big part about going to college. It might be the biggest thing you're nervous about. Um, and these guys told me that they have have friends and they'll talk about how these alleged friends came into their life. And I, I think that that's gonna be really comforting for you guys if that's something you're nervous about. So let's get us started. So um, uh, we'll go in alphabetical, we'll do some introductions. So we'll go in alphabetical or using your first name, like the initials of your first name. And Ainsley, stop me if you've heard it before, but that makes you first. I wish I named my child something with an A. She'd be first in everything. Um, but if you can just say who you are and where you're from and what you study at Boston College, and then I want you to talk, finish your introduction with this. Tell us about a club that's a big part of, or uh, an activity that's a big part of your life at BC. And then second is, what's your favorite club that you're not in at Boston College? that you really admire what they do, you watch what they do, you, you have friends that are in it, and you really think that what they do is very important to life at Boston College. So let's hear about you, about a club that's a big a part of your life at BC, and then a club that you're a big fan of. Yeah, of course. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Ainsley Brady. I am a sophomore at Boston College from Ridgefield, Connecticut. And I am a communications major in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. And I also have a journalism minor and a marketing minor in the School of Management. Um, for me, one of the clubs on campus that has become a big part of my life is Boston College College Democrats. Um, it is a political affiliated club, but it also works a lot with um, the student body, voter registration. We have a lot of um, informational meetings, and there's also a mentorship component to the club, which is something that has been really impactful for me and my college experience. A lot of clubs at BC will have mentorship programs, um, which pretty much just means that when you're a freshman, you have an upperclassman um, who's kind of like your touch point, both within the club and like within the university as a whole. Um, so for me, I met a lot of my close friends um, through college Dems. Um, I had friends that were on my floor that I lived with freshman year who were in the club, so I decided to join, and it really expanded my social circle. Um, and it's not even people like that I see every single day, but it's people that I see when I'm walking across the quad who I can like stop and chat with. Um, and it's nice to have like a weekly meeting to go to to talk about like the news or what's going on, both like globally and on campus. Um, so then a club that I'm not in 
that I really admire and think is really cool. Um, I'm not in this because I'm not really eligible to be in it, but the Heitzman, um, they're one of my favorite clubs on campus. Um, they are a acapella, all male acapella group. Um, they just had their spring cafe um, this past weekend and I went to that and it's just like such a nice group of guys, but also like they draw such a big part of the BC community to their performances. And it like being at one of those events like reminded me of like how supportive the community is of like other clubs and organizations. Like we filled like a 200, they filled like a 250 person lecture hall um, and it was like completely packed. And it was just like really fun to like be able to go. Like I don't personally know anyone in the club, but being able to go and like watch them do their thing. And they're also like excited to be there. Um, it was really a fun experience. All right, it's a good start. And college acapella is real. It's like you see in the movies. That's that's a, a good reminder. Thanks, Ainsley. Emma, Emma you're next. Uh, again, a uh, club that's a part of your life at BC, a big part of your life, and then a club that you're a big fan of so people can learn a little bit more about sort of the organizations and clubs that make up the tapestry of student involvement at Boston College. Absolutely. And I would say, Ainsley, you're kind of have the both with the A and the B for your initials. I feel like you get called first for probably everything, no matter which way it goes, because I was always like dead middle with the M, but then like towards the beginning with the E. So I always wanted to be like one or the other. So you're kind of perfect on that front. Um, but hi, guys, my name is Emma. I am a senior originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. I am studying marketing and business analytics in our Carroll School of Management. And I have a minor in faith, peace and justice in our Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. And one club that I've been involved with much during my time at BC that I think does a really good job encompassing kind of service opportunities here at BC is for Boston. So for Boston is one of our largest service organizations on campus. And essentially what happens is I joined it first semester freshman year. I had heard about it at a very similar accepted students um, event like this. And I kind of was like, it kind of when all the clubs of, and all the chaos of the first couple weeks of freshman year when we were trying to join things, it kept popping up my head. And I was like, oh, let me look up that application. So I popped on our website that has all the different applications for our social like, social clubs and organizations. And I filled it out for, for Boston and I got accepted into our service club, which is something you'll probably hear as a theme tonight. Um, you actually have to get accepted and apply into our service organizations a lot of the time here on campus. So I remember in my high school, they were begging people to do service, trying to get to fill your hours. Whereas on the flip side, now it's competitive to be able to serve, which I think is a really cool opportunity and shows how much students on campus care about service. But so I was able to join this club and I was actually sent to an all girls middle school and paired up to mentor a fifth grader. Um, and she is just the most funky girl on the entire face of the planet. And so I would go four weeks or four hours every week um, and get to go help her with her homework, get to know her better. I remember like Halloween time, we spent like three weeks picking out her costume and just kind of building that mentor mentee relationship over the course of the year. And we also had a one hour reflection back on campus every Sunday night. But my favorite part about for Boston my freshman year was that it had people from all grades across all years. And that really, for me, was a first semester freshman. I had no idea what I was doing. And I got to ride with the same sophomore who was a transfer. So it was also her first semester and a senior. Uh, and so the three of us kind of just started chatting. We would ride back and forth in Ubers every single week together. And I became super close to them because we had one who was almost the exact same position I was in, struggling, kind of figuring out what was going on, didn't know anything. And then we had a senior who was this amazing, accomplished, like very involved senior. And so we were, a lot of us were like, we were kind of looking up to her, what to do, what not to do, but also hearing like her stories, her experiences at BC. So being able to have someone that was younger than me and my fifth grader, and then someone that was older than me, kind of gave me the best of both worlds to kind of balance out freshman year and kind of pull from different parts of what BC can offer. And where Boston offers a ton of different service opportunities that you go into Boston for, it's kind of the connecting thread and then that reflection aspect. So it's a really cool organization that I would highly encourage you guys to look into. Um, but one that I would love to be in is very similar to Ainsley. Um, my like joke has always been if I could join a club at BC, I would join Sexual Chocolate. And Sexual Chocolate, you may wonder, what is that, Emma? So Sexual Chocolate is actually our all male identifying step group on campus. And so they all wear Timberlands. You can spot them anywhere on campus. And they are an amazing step group we have on campus that perform. And talk about selling out a show, they could sell out Rob Sham, which is our giant theater, just to watch a group step dance. And it's more the spirit and passion and energy for what they're doing that it just kind of makes you excited. And we have a giant um, dance 
show every February, March called Showdown um, that we might touch on a little bit later that ha- involves all of our dance groups on campus and they consistently win crowd favorite um, of that show because they have that much energy. So I think that's always one that I think community wise, that would be an ideal if I could, if I could dance, can't dance, I won't show you. Uh, but I think that for me would be a great group to be a part of. And I, I very much admire their like bonding and community aspect. Good one. Both examples, good examples, Emma. Thank you very much. Uh, Moving around the Zoom, next would be Haley. Haley, let's learn a little bit about you, the club that has had an impact on you here, and then the favorite, the club that you're the biggest fan of on campus. Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. Um, My name is Haley Cuthbert, and I'm a sophomore here at Boston College. I'm currently studying applied psychology in the Lynch School of Education Human Development, and I also have a minor in the Carroll School of Management for managing for the social impact and the public good. And I'm also on the pre-social work track. Um, and, I th- and I'm from Easton, Massachusetts, so not too far from here. Um, I would say one of the organizations that really have made a big impact on my Boston College career so far is actually this group called Stride. So Stride is a sophomore formation leaders program that um, here on campus. And so Stride is for sophomores only. Um, You are placed in a co-ed group with two upperclassmen mentors and then about eight to 10 other sophomores in your grade. And every week you kind of just get together, you discuss about your college experience, you talk about your identity, trying to just, it's kind of like a group where you can kind of rant about your problems of that week and then have other people kind of weigh in, give you some, some advice, give you some um, of their own experiences. So it's really a great bonding experience because you get to know eight to 10 other students who might be going through the same challenges you are sophomore year. But then also you have two upper class and mentors who can really help you along the way. And Stride is just one of the many um, like formation programs we have here at Boston College. They have freshman um, oriented ones as well, such as Ascend, which is for all girls, and then Freshman League, which is for all guys. Same kind of format. You kind of get put in a small group and you really just get to get to know those people and they're, they're your biggest support systems for that semester. And then you get to go on a retreat with all of them. And it's just such an amazing experience. I would say a club that I wish I was in um, is actually our campus activity board of Boston College. So when we're talking about things to do on campus, the campus activity board is the place to go because not only are they always, they send out a list of all the events that they're throwing that week. So I believe this week they're going to have a Fenway game that you can go to in Boston. They have golfing, they do ski trips, they do anything you can possibly think of. Um, and it's a really great opportunity to make friends because you just get to go to these events and you kind of just mingle, see who's there, but also it's a great way to k- keep forming relationships because you can just text someone saying, hey, do you want to go on this with me? And more often than not, they'll probably say yes, because there's some pretty cool um, things to do. And the events usually are free. Sometimes they do have a cost that associated with them. So like if you want to go skiing, you'd have to rent the materials. But more often than not, like trivia on campus that they have, it's free. Um, it just depends on the event. But more often than not, they are free because they want to be accessible to all students. So my roommates in it. I'm very jealous that I'm not in it. Well, you still have time, Haley. You still have time. You know, um, we like you in the student admissions program, which gives you access to these kind of events, but we could share you a little bit with Cab if you wanted to. Um, There's 24 hours in the day. I'm sure we could figure it out. Uh, All right, moving along. Jesse, let's hear a little bit about you and about these clubs that one that you're a part of and one that you're a fan of. Um, Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Jesse Blishka. I use she, her, hers pronouns. Uh, I am a current sophomore at Boston College studying political science in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences with a minor in marketing and another minor in the Carroll School of Management in marketing. Oh, I said marketing. Journalism. That's my other minor. (laughs) Um, So I'm from Stanford, Connecticut. And something that's huge in my life here at BC is the women's club water polo team. Um, It's something that's allowed me to continue on with a sport I was really passionate about my entire life um, at a pretty committed level, pretty competitive, but also so fun. And I've met some really amazing girls through that. Definitely the mentorship opportunities that um, Ainsley and Haley and Emma have all touched on, uh, meeting upperclassmen who I otherwise would not have had access to, basically, Um, and just girls even in my own grade. My current roommate is someone I met through water polo. So it's been a really amazing opportunity to branch out my social circle beyond who I just met in my immediate dorm freshman year. Um, And something I really admire, a club I really admire on campus is Strong Women, Strong Girls. 
a couple of my teammates are in it and it's another mentorship service opportunity uh, pretty similar to for Boston or some of the other themes that they've touched on already. Um, basically, you get to go to a place like whether it be a school or um, another place like that um, and you have a mentor or a mentee who is younger than you. Um, one of my teammates mentors a bunch of fifth graders. Um, so definitely an exciting time to be able to go into school, read with them, talk with them about their lives, like pick out their Halloween costume, like we already mentioned. Um, so just those opportunities like that, I things I wish I could get involved in and would hope to do so down the line. Uh, last but not least, Will, let's hear a little bit about you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Will Harrison. I'm a sophomore here in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, majoring in communication and minoring in history. Uh, and I'm originally from Elmhurst, Illinois. And a club that I'm involved in is the Parliamentary Debating Union here, which is one of our two uh, debate teams here on campus. And so that's been a really big part of being able to meet wonderful people. We have a social event once a month which is super fun. We also get to travel to other states for tournaments. So last year I got to go to Brown University, which is my first time in the state of Rhode Island, which was really cool. Uh, we also did a tournament last semester at Tufts University. And I'm also heavily involved in the executive board leadership aspect of the club. So actually next year, I will be the co-president of the club. So it'll definitely be a big part of my day-to-day uh, -day student life. We'll be running the debate team. And then I would say a club I wish I was involved in is the club running team here we have at Boston College. I'm not a very good runner fast enough to be on the team, but I know several people on the team. And beyond just the running aspect of the club, they also do a couple of great charity events. So recently they did a 24 hour relay to raise money for the campus school here at Boston College. So that was a really cool event. And it showed like, you know, the real uh, service aspect we have at Boston College that everybody else has touched on. getting to know upperclassmen, but let's bring it back down to getting to know kids that are in your level, your grade level, when you moved in. Talk about the community that's built in the residence halls. Uh, Ainsley, starting off, talk about moving in, how you started to meet some people that you were living in community with in the residence hall. Yeah, of course. Um, so I remember I moved in on the first day. I already knew um, my roommate. I had met her previously. Um, She's from the same area as me. And I started to kind of talk to the girls on my floor. Jessie was actually um, in the room right next to me on the same floor um, in Keys, that's on Newton. And I would say like initially just like walking around meeting people, um, something that really helped me as a freshman those first few nights, um, CAB, which was mentioned before, the Campus Activities Board threw a lot of um, events for freshmen when they first got to campus. So I remember there was like a carnival boardwalk themed event that they did in the um, arena Conti forum for all the freshmen and students to go to. Um, and so I kind of started getting to know the girls on my floor. The RAs also helped with that a lot. Um, I loved my RA, she was super sweet. And she would have, we had a couple floor wide meetings, um, those first few days on campus where we got to meet everyone. Um, and honestly, that first week we bonded over the heat because it was the end of the summer and we were all, you know, with our fans in our dorm rooms trying to, you know, move in, but also like get acclimated. And I just remember every day, like seeing people in the bathroom and being like, oh yeah, no, it's definitely the end of the summer here in Massachusetts. Um, and just kind of like getting to meet people that way. Another big thing for me of getting to know the girls on my floor, um, I lived on Newton. So every day for class, I would do the five minute bus ride to campus, um, which was honestly a great way to meet people because you're sitting down next to someone, you get to chat with them um, and kind of have some just like small talk, but then you see them around, you get to know the people that are living in your dorm. And then um, just kind of got a girl, group of girls together, went out into the city. Um, also like late night studying. We have really nice like common study rooms um, on all the floors of pretty much all the dorms on campus. And so in my dorm, we would kind of meet in the study area and you just see who's there. You talk, you do, you do work, you find people who are taking the same classes as you or have the same major um, and just kind of work through it that way. I, I know a lot of people who meet their friends through their dorm, um, or who would just find that as a stepping point to finding their greater group of friend, friends later on. Um, but it's definitely like a good place to start. And I feel like the community aspect of the dorm was like really well fostered by like the RA and just like the way that it's all set up, having all the freshmen living together um, was really nice. 
you move in, you get to know some of the people you live in the hall with. And then, you know, in the first couple of weeks of school, one of my favorite activities happens, and that's the student involvement fair. You've lived through a couple of student involvement fairs, Emma. Can you explain what that is and sort of what the what the energy and the uh, vibe is that day and and how it's really important to sort of getting getting your social network and getting your engagement at a college started like BC? Absolutely. Um, we've already mentioned a couple of times about college a cappella, but I always compare our student activities fair the second Friday of school to be like in Pitch Perfect, the movie where they have the table of all the a cappella groups and they're all kind of yelling at you and trying to recruit you. Um, our organization fair might be the most hectic day on campus. It could rival Marathon Monday, to be honest. Um, we have over 300 organizations on campus and every single one of them gets a table on this day. So if you come to campus before, we have this giant lawn known as Stokes Lawn and that's where it's held. So all of the tables are on the same place outside on this lawn and you're out in the sun for like five six hours looking at these tables and people are working them continuously and essentially every one of those clubs is trying to recruit freshmen so they all have flyers they all have candy they're all yelling screaming it is one of the most overwhelming but exciting days i remember i walked back to my dorm after to start googling all of them and look through the website to find them and i had like 20 flyers in my hands with the first meetings of the general interest like meetings and forms and i was like what is this? Who is this? I don't know what's happening. I just asked if I could sing, dance, juggle, like debate, and I couldn't do any of them. So I was like, where am I going to fit in? And that was when I kind of resorted to looking at the Fort Boston interview and application because I was like, I know, I know what this is. But everything else was just kind of like a shot in the dark. And what's nice is that you don't make any commitment when you go to that fair. So you really can grab 20 flyers and then kind of whittle them down to what you actually have interest in once you are not in the middle of that giant crowd. But I think one of the coolest parts was this year when I was walking around the club fair, I got to work a table and I got to see all of my friends now the leaders of those clubs. So now being a senior, seeing all of my friends not on the side of the people being yelled at, but the ones actually yelling at people because they're so passionate and excited about their clubs and they just want to share and have new people join. It was one of the most rewarding things walking around. I got right fried this year because um, it was a hot Friday because I was actually working for the student admission program, which is the one who's hosting this panel tonight. Um, but I remember just getting like absolutely toasted, like sitting out there um, in the sun with all my friends. But I think that kind of full circle of seeing them go from like the fresh new students with myself to being the ones actually running all those organizations was a really cool time. And I promise it's not as overwhelming as it sounds. It's a cr crazy 30 minutes, but then you kind of sit down, you get to kind of have a little peace moment of like, okay, what do I actually want to do? And what's nice is you have a lot of opportunities to do one club your freshman year, maybe two or three your sophomore year, maybe back to two or one your junior year and kind of like focus and hone in on what you love. So I think that really kind of gives you the flexibility to not have to commit also that first day freshman year. Drone usually flies overhead to see like all the tables on the quad and it's just like definitely the stereotypical is, yeah. like college days. It's one of my favorites. Absolutely. I'm sure if you guys scroll back on BC's Instagram, I like know exactly the photo. It's probably like September 5th, like Labor Day weekend time. If you look back, there is definitely a photo of all of the tables out on the lawn. So it's definitely a fun day on campus. Usually that next day is like the first football game. So Jesse, mm -hmm. you were the one that talks a little bit about athletics. Let's stay on the theme. Talk about the role of like football. Talk about the role of like sports in terms of bringing the community together. You know, I think a lot of people want to go to colleges that have high levels of school spirit. Sometimes that manifests itself in Division One football, or Division One basketball. So give me a little sense. Uh, you know, I don't know if you're a big football fan, a big sports fan. You play. I don't know if you're again a big BC Eagles fan, but if you are. Talk about the role that brings people together and maybe you make friends and, you know, get a groups together to tailgate and go to games or take a road trip. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. I would definitely consider myself a big fan of the sports here at BC. I figured uh, I just wanted to give you a little leeway on that. I figured. Yeah, absolutely. So like Ainsley mentioned that Newton bus, um, you're getting on that bus. It's pretty early in the morning, depending on what time the game is. And you're going over to this football game with girls or people you met, like, maybe five days ago and you just kind of all band together you're excited about having some school spirit excited to go to a football game you're 
you know, not really sure what to expect and you get there and it's just like an, a sea of people that are just excited to be at BC. And I think that's something that has manifested itself um, in my experience so far here as a whole is you see alumni, you see people that went here 30, 40 years ago, just excited to be back. Um, and that's something that you always feel on campus, I think, is just the excitement to be here and the gratitude to be here. Um, but I remember being kind of overwhelmed at my first game, but also feeling very, very lucky. Um, and then, you know, you get into the winter, you might just be walking around campus. I, I have an on-campus job, so it's in Conti Forum. Sometimes I'll be walking back and I'll see, oh, look, there's a hockey game going on. Maybe I'll go sit down with my coworkers and who I don't know very well, and we'll just watch the game for a bit, have a hot dog. Like it's experiences like that, that I think make BC sports really special is once you just kind of, especially as a freshman, remind remember that everyone else is in the same boat and everyone's excited to make friends and have these new experiences. Um, and once you just kind of start doing things and going to games and doing all this football and the tailgates and it all becomes a lot easier. Cool. There's games on the weekends, clubs are meeting, you have classes. Like, do you notice like every day there are now things filling up and weekends are filling up and what kind of ways did you fill up your weekends when you were younger? And even now, like, do you dedicate a little bit of time to Boston? Do you dedicate a little bit of time to laundry? Do you look at what's going on with all these clubs and organizations in terms of what their concerts, events are over the weekend? I mean, is that how a typical BC student kind of looks at their weekend or looks at their week and says, oh, I know that this one has a concert. Oh, I know that there's a play. I know there's a game. I mean, is that what you do every week? Is that how you fill up your time? Definitely, especially for the sports aspect. Uh, my roommates and I are very big BC sports fans, and so we heavily value our weekend time over what kind of sports games are going on. So we'll always know when the basketball and hockey and uh, football games are in particular. And then as well, we love spending time in Boston. So sometimes on a Saturday afternoon, we'll say, oh, like, let's go into the Fenway and go to a restaurant that we really like uh, and just kind of hang out uh, as roommates. And so we kind of do a mixture of both, I would say. Definitely also looking, like Haley said, looking at what the Canvas Activities Board has planned for the week and seeing if any of those events interest us as well. Find people that share traditions with you, share a, uh, an ethnicity with you, a culture with you. Um, we uh, ALC Showdown was mentioned. I mean, a real celebration of a lot of different traditions and cultures. You know, Haley, as much as there are clubs and activities that are about performances or about, you know, uh, competitions, athletics, you know, there's a lot of uh, ethnical, ethnic, cultural organizations that you've seen. And, and there's certainly a lot of service organizations that you've seen. So even though we've been talking about programs all over, let's, let's focus a little bit on those. You know, you've seen in a couple of years, uh, these cultural organizations, the service organizations, what are the bigger ones? What are the ones that stand out? What are the ones that are very active that you've seen on campus? Yeah, so um, one of my favorite events that BC has is actually happening this weekend. It's our world's like trade set and like fair that we have on campus. So basically um, on like a Saturday for like four hours, all the cultural groups on campus will go up to the main quad and they just want, they just, the whole task of that day is to just share their, um, their ethnic, ethnic group or just some traditions from their, um, from whatever club they are. So I know the um, Hawaiian club, they give out shaved ice and they kind of give you some introductions to like some um, like some like traditions from Hawaii. Then you have the Italian club that's it's giving out pizza and giving you trivia about Italy. Then you have the Jamaican club having trivia about their um, country's history and you can win a prize. And then all this is going on. Then you have um, dance groups like Fuego del Corazon and um, Patu doing their traditional dances from, that are inspired from um, whatever cultural background they come from. And literally you just spend however long you want just going through the tables and getting a chance to learn a little bit more about a culture you may not know a lot about. And it was also a great way for me to um, make new friends. I went with my current roommate who's from Hawaii. I went and then I, we met up with my friend that is from Mongolia and she was sharing some of her um, traditional like um, things from Mongolia. My, my, one of my roommates grew up in Shanghai, so she's really big into the Asian Caucus Club. So it was really a great time to not only just see the friends that you made and just kind of hear a little bit more about their backgrounds. That is my favorite part by far by BC is you just getting to 
meet someone and just learning about how they grew up. I actually met a lot of my current friends because we all sat down together for dinner one night and they pointed out that because I'm from Massachusetts, I say a lot of words wrong. Like I say rum instead of room. I say bubbler and it just led to a debate for over an hour about all the different words that we say. And so that's how I actually became best friends with four of my current roommates. And so I will say the World Trade um, sent World, World Trade Fair. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, I think that's my, one of my favorite events on campus, especially to learn so much about different um, backgrounds and cultural identities here at BC. Don't take any grief, Haley. The Massachusetts people, we have to stick together. Don't take any grief. Um, can, can we talk a little bit about um, most people who are tuning in and certainly you guys know our Jesuit identity and you know, we like to think that there are some organizations that really highlight the Jesuit identity. And these are things that you either know about or participated in. Emma, Emma, can you give an example of something that you know is present at Boston College in the in the area of organizations, clubs, uh, activities that, you know, for people to hone in and identify what it's like to be at a Jesuit school, it might be a good example of that. Yes, I think um, retreat culture here at BC is huge. Um, so one of the Jesuit values we have here on campus is cura personalis, which means care of the whole person. And I am a broken record, but I always say that BC wants you not just to be a good student, but BC wants you to become a really good person. So that means, as we've been talking about, joining service organizations, mem uh, mentorship programs, like, will you're learning to debate, like all those things, like you're kind of adding more tools of who, who you're going to add to when you leave BC, like of who you're going to become. And Care Personality really wraps that up into just kind of a phrase of who BC wants to put you out into the world as. And I think that retreats offer you a really good time just to pause and do that. One of the ones that's exclusively for freshmen on campus is called 48 Hours. And so that's essentially a weekend during your freshman year where you can sign up to go away for the weekend. And they actually take you down to Cape Cod, this like very nice hotel. Um, and they usually put you up there for the weekend. And I know for me, I was one of those people that was just kind of running like 90 miles an hour at college. I'm, as I said, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, like I was completely starting fresh here and I wanted to make as many friends as possible. I wanted to kind of be involved in a lot of things, but also not take it too far, but also was somehow running out of sleep already. And I think I didn't even realize that I needed a pause until I had, it was, I got an email like on a Monday saying, okay, bus leaves at four o'clock on the Friday. And I was like, oh shoot, like I was supposed to do this this weekend. But then I was like, no, this would be a really good time just to get away and meet new people. And that's really what retreats and off here at BC offer. It's just a time to pause. You don't realize things that are going wrong or things that are going really right until you actually stop and just sit and reflect on it. And I think for me, I realized that a lot of the people that I had been spending time with were more going out friends than like day to day friends. Like they were people that I would text like, what are you doing tonight? But not people that I would want to ask to get lunch with me every day or that I would ask call if something was going wrong. I had my direct roommate who is still my direct, direct roommate to this day and I adore her. But other than that, I was kind of surrounded by people that I wasn't really connecting with in the same way I thought I was. I had class friends, I had going out friends, I had club friends, but I didn't really have that. And I realized that in meeting new people when I was hearing them share their experiences, feeling the same way, I was like, wait, we're all kind of in the same spot. And this was November. So it was right before our Thanksgiving break and heading into finals. And it kind of was just a really good time for me to sit and pause and realize that maybe my, my friends from my floor or down my hall weren't going to be those forever friends or those four-year friends. And so I think I didn't even realize that I was having those doubts until I was given the space and time to do that. And I think that's just one of many retreats we have on BC's campus um, that I think really exemplify like what it is like to be at a Jesuit institution that really focuses and creates spaces just to sit, talk, and think. Um, and I, clearly I like to talk, but I think the thinking part needed a little bit of like a time to catch up with the talking part. And I think 40 hours was a really good experience to be able to do that. I think you nailed it, Emma. Thanks. That was great. And um, someone brought up a good point in the uh, Q&A about, you know, we could spend all this time talking about really cool traditions, events, activities, clubs. What about school and finding the balance between some of the expectations you have of yourself as students and <laughs> teachers have of you as students too, and, and balancing that with meeting new people and having all these great memories and having all these great events. Ainsley, is that an acquired thing? Is that, is that a trial and error thing? Or did you come with a pretty good foundation from high school about how to make time for work, how to make time for, for all this other stuff? Yeah, no, definitely. I think having a balance is very important. And it's something that is, I would say, 
a learning, like a process you have to learn. Um, when you come to BC college, everyone comes from a different high school, has a different schedule, but college is a little bit different. At least it was for me in the sense that you don't wake up, go to school at 7.30, come home at two o'clock, do your homework, go to sports. It's not kind of structured like that. It's more, you know, you have hour 15 or 50 minute classes and you maybe have two of those or three of those a day, but then you have these long stretches of time. Um, and so for me, taking advantage of those stretches of time and being able to say like, you know, I have free, I have free time right now, but I'm gonna go to the library because it's a Friday afternoon and I know my weekend's gonna be really busy. Um, so I wanna get some work done right now. I think that's like really important. And also like building in habits into my weekend schedule was something that took definitely a lot of um, learning and trial and error. But for me, like being able to not just, you know, wake up on Sunday and do all my work for Monday, but being able to say like, okay, like, this Saturday, I'm going to, you know, get a group of friends together and we're going to go to the library or we're going to go into Boston. We love to go to the public library in Boston. It's so beautiful. Um, and it's a nice way to kind of like, you know, get off campus, have a little adventure, but also, you know, do some work. So I would say it's don't expect and don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to come here and immediately have the same schedule as high school or, you know, feel like you know exactly what when you're getting your work in because it is overwhelming. And there is a lot of pressure to like, you know, not only adjust academically, but, you know, socially and make friends and you want to say yes to every opportunity that is presented to you. Um, so it's, it's definitely a learning process to get the right balance. But I would say like who you surround yourself with is really important. You know, if you're finding that like your friends are just always like go 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 you know maybe find some people that you can go to the library with um during the day or find like you know a study buddy something like that to help you stay motivated um but like give yourself some time to figure it out because it, it definitely it'll come but it's definitely an adjustment thanks Ainsley and I will say that my first job ever was the circulation desk at the Boston Public Library in Copley Square that's that was the first paycheck I ever got was from there. So glad you like it so much. Uh, uh, with Jesse and Will, what I'd like you to do is think about, you know, with this program, I wanted to talk about clubs and, and getting your network together. But I also want to talk about some of the things that brings our community together. So I'm going to give each of you a chance to talk about your favorite BC tradition. Uh, it could be one of the cliche ones that everyone always talks about. We, we could talk about them too, or maybe it's some smaller tradition that has a little bit meaning, deeper meaning for you and your friends or, or just what, what your path at Boston College has been. So uh, we'll start with you, Will. What's your favorite BC tradition and, and why does that stand out among the others? Well, um, I think I'll try to go for a little bit of a deeper cut tradition, but uh, one that I've always loved is Parents Weekend. So um, every, it usually is at the end of September or the first weekend of October. Boston College has a parents weekend where it culminates on Saturday in a football game. So I've been fortunate enough. my parents have, been, have flown out here for both of those weekends this, uh, during my time here at BC. Um, and so going to the football game with them, doing tailgating with them was super fun as well. And then uh, on Friday night, I believe, right before the football game, they have a wonderful tradition here called Pops on the Heights at Boston College. And so that's a great concert event we have where the Boston uh, Symphony Chorale, I believe is the name of it. Could be wrong on that, but it's some type of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. They play at Boston College. Um, the parents and students go together and then they bring like a special musical guest to play with them. So my freshman year it was Train and then this year it was John, uh, John Baptiste. And so those two events culminating like as the parents weekend as a whole were super fun ways that, you know, I was able to see my parents again, uh, especially for freshman year. They came back only a month after they left me at, at Boston. So it was really great to see them again and tell them that I was doing okay in college so far. Um, and just a really great event for me. Jesse. Um, this may also be going a bit more of the traditional BC route, but uh, Mass of the Holy Spirit for me is something that I've really liked having on campus. I was not raised particularly religious, but it's something that I did find here at BC uh, through my theology courses and conversations with other students. Um, so the Mass of the Holy Spirit basically kicks off at the beginning of the academic year. It's basically just to put everyone in a good headspace and um, get ready for the upcoming academic year. Um, and I think it's something that is 
kind of moving. You can go with your friends um, and sit there and kind of get in the headspace. And that's for me is when I'm like, it's go time. We're, we're, we're ready to go and we're all here together um, under like the Jesuit identity, but also just as peers and students and people that are there with similar goals. Uh, so that's something that I've really loved having here at BC as a tradition. Um, and then just to, as we're wrapping this up, some things I want to make sure that we touched upon. Uh, Emma, while we talked about a lot of different programs, cultural, performing, uh, there's a professional programs at Boston College, too, for people that are like looking ahead to something postgraduate, pre-law, pre-med. Uh, do you have much experience with that? A lot of your friends that are graduating in just a matter of a few weeks, probably hey. participate in these things to get ready for the next step. Uh, can you give us some examples of, of what you know of the professional programs here? Absolutely. So I've actually been a part of one since my freshman year called Women in Business. Um, and what's really cool is that the Women in Business program does not require you to actually be in our Carroll School of Management to be a part of it. So as long as you're a female ad identifying student on campus, you are free to join um, Women in Business, as affectionately known as WIB. Um, essentially, in the same way that we talk about the Campus Activities Board that sends out like a long list of events that are going on, WIB will send out, I think, seven to ten events every week that they're holding. And it can be as something as simple as going for a walk around the res with two or three of the juniors and seniors that are on the executive board to having companies like FTI Consulting came a couple weeks ago and brought a ton of Chipotle with them and like held an intro to consulting meeting. So really coming um, kind of go a very wide range of activities, but it's a really cool opportunity. I remember my freshman year as a part of um, what they call book club. And it literally is just a time to kind of get together with like 10, 15 of the women in the club every week and just kind of chat about like different business articles we'd seen, things happening in the news. Um, and it was just a really good time to kind of, again, talk to those mentors, get class recommendations, professor recommendations, kind of do a little bit that, more of that small talk. And it also set me up pretty well for networking my sophomore and junior year, kind of just getting used to that kind of small talk, conversational, uh, just like business to do conversation. Um, and I also think uh, in terms of things outside of business, um, one of all my good friends who's also part of this student organization, um, she is going to med school. And so she's part of the pre-med organization and they run like full gambit, like pre-med interviews, like we'll look at your application, like have people that are like grad assistants that know what they're doing. They've gotten in like test prep, like very intense, but very like beneficial. And there are similar um, organizations like that for pre-dental kids and pre-law um, kids, um, pre-vet kids, I think also have a group. So there's really a lot of different groups that kind of help you with that pre- insert anything you can imagine um organizations on campus um so business is obviously a more general one but they also do have more like very niche ones like we have a consulting group um we have an investment banking group for all those banker kids uh we have a lot of different opportunities like that um but for me women in business has been a really good one to kind of pull from different uh areas of campus you know the next step for some of these students would be orientation. Some students have already started to get to know each other from either coming to our events on campus, like Admitted Student Day, or they've started to engage in Facebook and other things. Um, did you do any of these things when you before you had arrived? Did you already know a bunch of people? And did you seek them out when you got here? Did you use any of these things to find a roommate or to make your first lunch date? Like, are these things helpful? And should people either get more engaged or check them out uh, because you found it somewhat helpful when you got to campus? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's so many different ways to get to know people before you even come to campus. So I'm the only person from my high school, from my town that went here. So I was getting completely fresh slate. Like I knew no one going into it, which was a little nerve wracking at first. I didn't have a roommate picked out. I decided to go random, um, which if for the roommate process, you can either pick ahead of time to have your roommate or if you do what I did. You felt like a questionnaire and then BC like matches you with someone who follows some of the same things, like what time you go to bed, um, what time you wake up, are you neat, neat or clean? So they help you find a roommate and I lucked out and I've had the same roommate, direct roommate for two years and I love her to death. Um, but I definitely, one of the biggest tools that I use coming into BC was that a lot of times, um, 
you'll find on social media, like you'll have a Facebook group for everyone in your grade, you'll have an Instagram. And then literally, I think everyone here um, on this call understands and remembers the time where you just got so many people Snapchats and Instagrams and you were DMing them, like saying like, oh, when we get to campus, like I can't wait to meet you. And to this day, you might not know them anymore because everyone's kind of looking for friends that first week. And then you find your people, you find the people that you're going to have lunch with. You're going to slowly start to find the people who have the same interests as you. And so definitely social media was a big one for me. Um, and then also um, orientation is also a great time um, for my class. It was all online. So a lot of times like we would meet once a week for an hour and then we would share some our Instagram, Snapchat, phone numbers, anything like that. And then the big thing was when we came on campus, um, I know it was mentioned earlier, um, the campus activity board and the first year experience office, there's a whole bunch of events. So um, one night we had like a mini like quad concert where it was like there was a DJ on campus and you just went around and you just started getting people Snapchats and phone numbers, plans um, to make a day. Um, there's groups like Discover Boston where you get, um, play, um, you can sign up online, it's free. Um, you'll have two upperclassmen mentors and they'll take you to your favorite spot in Boston. Um, and then you just get to meet, um, go to this place in Boston. They show you how to work the green line and the T and then you get to make friends from it. So definitely the first few weeks of school, everyone's always looking for friends and you will make so many friends. If anything, you might be overwhelmed with the amount of people that you've met and now you're texting and trying to remember where you met them from. And there's gonna be times where you forget who you met until they come up to you, remind you how you met them. But definitely social media was a great um, outlet, um, outlet, outlet, and then um, orientation groups and just the first week of school is really where you kind of meet your people. I mean, you're in the Big Ten, you're in Big Ten country and out by Chicago. You have friends that are at U of I, Madison, all these places. You saw them rushing. You saw them joining fraternities. Do you feel like you've made strong friends, strong friend group, you feel like you've been exposed to a lot of different ideas, even though Greek life isn't a factor at BC. I definitely feel that way. I've been very fortunate. I met most of my friends through my residence hall itself. So I uh, definitely did not have any issues with not joining a fraternity. Uh, I was able to meet people, uh, no problem. And, and Jesse, Ainsley, I'll give you both the last word. Just real quickly, was making friends, was making connections your biggest concern about coming to college? And has it turned out not to be so bad? Because maybe you saw all these things that were around you when you came here that were easy to, to take advantage of, easy to be a part of, and now you found your people. Um, yeah, I can start and take that one. I think coming into college, like you have this whirlwind of concerns, you don't even know where to begin, but making connections is a huge thing for me. It's something I've always valued is having people to talk to. Uh, so definitely a big concern for me. Similar to Will, I met most of the girls that are now my roommates um, on my floor last year in my residence hall in Keys on Newton. I'm a huge fan of Newton. I don't think you can possibly go wrong by living there. Um, and like Ainsley mentioned earlier, talking to people on the bus, those concerns were very quickly shut down. Uh, once I realized everyone around me, like I mentioned earlier, is in the same boat, wants to make friends, wants to reach out, uh, wants to hear from you about your life and what you're looking forward to at BC. Um, so that's the concerns very quickly went away, despite how big they may have been beforehand. Just to echo that kind of sentiment, I, I think everyone is worried about finding friends when they come to college and just finding a community. For me, I came from high school. I know everyone has a different high school experience, but for me, I had a really close knit group of friends and I really felt like I had a nice community in high school. So coming to college, I wasn't really sure how I was gonna figure that out. I lived in the same town my entire life. Um, but like immediately within the first week of getting here, I had people to go to lunch with. Everyone is in the same boat on like the first week in a school, you're going to see like, I think this is the case at every school, you're going to see big groups of people walking around and you're going to say, like, how did that person make 12 friends within the first 24 hours of college? Don't stress, like everyone has this experience. They, I guarantee you, don't probably know most of those people's last names. It's not a rush. It's not a race. It's really just about like figuring out, first of all, who you are and who you want to be kind of like figuring out your identity, what you want to get involved in, who you want to be in college, and then just sort of letting that lead you to the right people. For me, like not trying to fit a specific mold or like a specific, you know, type of like 
outgoing or whatever like you know you think you should be just like be yourself and that's how you'll find like the right people for you it's definitely a process it comes at different times for different people um but there are so many resources on campus for you to go to if you are struggling or even if you're having a great time like I've had conversations with professors throughout my time at BC mentors and clubs you know like uh even like your oh my god I'm blanking on the name now um Oh my God, not your RA, but even your RA, yeah. Um, and you have like upperclassmen in your classes that'll help you out. So there's so many people you can go to um, to talk about your experience and you 100%, whether it's like one really close friend or like 10 people that you consider family, like you will find who you're supposed to be with in the right time for you um, at BC or, you know, whatever your college experience may be. Very nicely said, Ainsley. Uh, well, hopefully we think it's BC. So let's, let's keep it there. Um, this was great. You guys did a wonderful job at talking about all aspects of finding community at Boston College. Um, and like you said, Ainsley, wherever that might be, because the importance of finding college, uh, finding community in any college is what you're all looking for. And I could not wish for you a better situation than getting onto a college campus and finding people that will challenge you and support you and share interests with you and, and, and make you the best you that you can be. Um, you guys really nailed it. Thank you so much for giving some time. And for those of you that tuned in, we really appreciate it. Hopefully this got you thinking about getting engaged and getting involved when you get to college right away. Um, so we're just about over here. Tomorrow, there's another one of these virtual panels and it's just spotlighting seniors, the talented people like Emma, who we say goodbye to in a few weeks, but we want to wring out every bit of wisdom that we can before they, you know, hit the bricks. Uh, so tune in tomorrow. And next week, we have one last virtual program talking about a lot of different people, freshmen through seniors, about why they chose BC. Hopefully, you're finding these virtual programs helpful as you're trying to put together what place would be right for you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Again, thanks to my panelists. Have a good night. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.